Hi, this is Ken. Welcome to my home chemistry laboratory. Uh, today I'd like to share with you some results that I've had in trying to replace the sulfuric acid and battery acid with sodium bisulfate, which is a safer and as functional material. Let me begin by showing you an overall view of the control, which is the sulfuric acid standard and then these are all from the replacement of sodium bisulfate. Now, although I consider these dilute solutions to be relatively safe, I continue to use gloves just to be cautious. The first part of this experiment really has to be in the cleaning of the aluminum. In the case of what I, what I the results that I've had are best achieved when I use steel wool, a very fine fine stained wheel of steel wool, and then with some scotch brite and a dish detergent to wash it up and continue to get the any residual contamination off of the surface. At this point there are two options. You can go into the two percent dilute solution of sodium hydroxide which is household lye for one to three minutes which I recommend. Or you can go directly into the anodizing solution which is the sodium bisulfate. Uh, the results generally speaking are a little bit better if you do the sodium hydroxide etch. From the etch it goes into a rinse and then goes directly into the anodizing solution. Anode obviously the positive side and uh, I've tried to illustrate and describe that there is a slight change in the metal when it is done. Unfortunately, it is very, very difficult to show. But uh, I would suggest starting off with giving it with a 20% solution of the sodium bisulfate as recommended in the completed write-up after this video. I would suggest that you give it 60 minutes and then take a look at it. Well, it's, it, the, the cell structure generally shows up very nicely with a slight yellow tinge. You will notice that there are some bubbles coming off of the cathode which are small amounts of hydrogen. On this level and very small scale you'll note that there isn't a, an awful lot of hydrogen. But as always, uh, use some good ventilation and consider the fact that this is, an a, this is a base and this is definitely an, an acid. So we have to have some respect. In this case I'm using a 6 volt rechargeable battery uh, and my most recent current draws seem to be about between 280 and 320 milliamps which is very low but I'll give the complete formula for calculating larger surface areas. Once it's been in for an hour then it goes to another rinse and then from there right directly into the RIT dye solution. Very very straightforward. This one has not been etched. It was done for 60 minutes and you can see the results are pretty good. But they would be slightly better if this had been etched for just one to three minutes. Once the dye has reached the level of color that you want, you simply put it into a container of boiling water for 20 to 30 minutes. An optional sealing can be done with nickel acetate but I found out that really the boiling water is certainly a lot cheaper and it does as good a job in sealing up the dyes in those those cell structures. After the video and the complete write-up I'll also include uh, some really good links particularly to the to the encyclopedia of electrochemistry which is a fantastic article on anodizing both the chemistry and the physics and I think you'll find this a very worthwhile project a lot of fun to do and the results were for me quite good so my name is Ken thanks for watching